I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Map Institute. We will consider conditions for convergence of a sequence in this particular video. Now, there are many conditions which we could test for to see whether a sequence given to us is convergent or not. In case the sequence is convergent, we can of course find its sum. The question here is, determine whether each sequence is convergent or divergent. If a sequence is convergent, give the limit of the sequence, right? So there are six examples which we are going to consider and these will help you understand the topic in great details. Question 1, sin pi by 2, sin 3 pi by 2, sin 5 pi by 2, sin 7 pi by 2 and so on. That is an infinite series when we write dot, dot, dot. I should say sequence. Perfect. Then here is the second sequence where we have pi by 2, pi by 4, pi by 8, pi by 16 and so on. And question number 3, we just made them interesting but they are very common examples. E square, E. 1, e to the power minus 1, and so on, and then decimals, 1.89, 1 1.899, 1 1.8999, and so on, and then we have taken two examples where the sequence is written in terms of limit. Well, if the sequence is convergent, give the limit of the sequence. Basically, we have infinite sequence. There are infinite terms. We are trying to figure out what could be the last term, right? You can never approach infinity, right? You can never be there, but you can approach that value. So, so where you could approach, and this word limit exactly says that, right? So, as given in the question, limit of the sequence. Is that clear to you, right? So, we have two examples with limits, uh, and we'll see how do we answer these questions. Once we learn about sequences and the form given to us like this, the next video will be to find the sum of such sequences when n or the where the unknown quantity varies from 0 to infinity. So, we will take up an example shown here. Since we have the sum of this sequence, it is definitely a convergent sequence, right? Okay, so that will be in the next video. So, let us continue with solution to these. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. After attending university, the winner of this year's Certificate of Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandilani. <laughs> Great. Our student, Akshat, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulek Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes and excel. The first two are taken here. So, we have sine of pi by 2, sine of 3 pi by 2, sine of 5 pi by 2, sine 7 pi by 2 and so on. So, so if you know what is this referring to in any circle? For example, you can look into the position of sine. So, we are talking about two positions. One is at pi by 2, the other one 3 pi by 2. Then again, 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2. Do you see that? So, you are looking at two values which are 1 and minus 1, correct? Right? So, what do we notice? Well, let me rewrite this sine pi by 2 is basically plus 1, sine 3 pi by 2 is minus 1, sine 5 pi by 2 is again plus 1 and so on it goes, right? So, what do we notice? We notice that the value actually fluctuates, right? So, it oscillates. 
between plus 1 and minus 1, correct? So, at any instance, we really do not know whether it be positive or negative 1, right? So, we say this is divergent, it is not convergent, right? Do you see that? So, convergent and divergent does not really mean that the value goes to infinitely large amount, you get the idea. Convergent means that it converges to a value which you can determine, right? So, here we will classify this as divergent. Very unique example where the value is kind of fixed, right? But since it is either positive 1 or negative 1, it oscillates and in such cases, we say it is not convergent and it is divergent. You get the idea. So, that is why I have taken this example. I hope you find it interesting. Let us move on to question number 2. So, the sequence here is pi by 2, pi by 4. So, what do you notice, right? So, you notice that each term is being multiplied by half, right? So, so here the first term a is pi by 2 and r, the ratio between each is what? Is half, right? So, we are multiplying the first term each time by half. So, you see it is a geometric series. I should call it a sequence. We say series when we use plus sign in between, otherwise sequence. Is that clear to you? So, geometric sequence where we have seen that the value of r is actually less than 1, right? Let me write down absolute value, it is half and whenever this value of r is less than 1, the sequence is convergent, right? So, we can write this as convergent. Now, the question was, if the sequence is convergent, give the limit of this, right? So, that means this number is decreasing, you see that? The number is decreasing, so ultimately, the limit when the term number n approaches infinitely large for this particular sequence, let us call this sequence as S1, right? It will approach what? It will approach 0, you get the idea? is decreasing to 0, right? So, that is how we are going to answer this. Now, let us take up the next two examples. So, you can answer these questions. E square, right? So, we have E square and then we have E and then we have 1 and then 1 over E. That E to the power of minus 1 is basically 1 over E. So, here again we see that this is again a geometric sequence, right? where the first term is e square, right? That is the initial value a and they are multiplied each time by 1 over e, correct? So, it is decreasing, right? e is a value which is between 2 and 3, right? Is that correct? Since 1 over e is actually less than 1, it is convergent. So, any geometric sequence which is of the form a, a r, right, a r square, a r q and so on, where a is the first term, r is the common ratio. In that case, if r is less than 1, positive value of r, absolute value of r, in that case, it will converge, right? Correct. The next one here is 1.89 and then we have 1.899, and then we have 1.8999, and so on, right? So, this 9s will spill over, correct? So, that means the limit of this is what? Well, the limit of this sequence will be, as the number of terms approaches infinitely large, will be 1.9, correct? And in the first case, whenever we have this kind of a scenario, it converges to, converges to 0. Do you see that? So, in the geometric series sequence, it is kind of damping, kind of like this, right? Do you see that? It approaches 0. Perfect. So, that is how we could answer these questions. The next two I have taken based on the limits concept as 
many times these questions are combined together. We also have examples with summation sigma, right, which I shared with you earlier, which we are going to take up in the next video, right. So, so this topic of convergent and divergent, we treat in many different places, which includes integration also, where we have n factorial or such sequences, okay. So, those examples we'll take later, okay. Now, let's try to understand how do we find the limit of this? If the limit exists, then this is convergent, right? So, so that is what it is. So, basically, if the sequence is convergent, give the limit of the sequence, we'll directly find the limit here. Now, here is a very simple technique to find the limit. So, our question here is to find the limit if n approaches infinitely large. And we have 3n plus 1 over 1 minus n square. So, so the technique is that we can actually take n common, right? So, we could write this equation as limit n approaches infinitely large. Taking n common, we get 3 plus 1 over n over. And here, we take n common. So, here we have n squared. You see that? So, let us take n squared common. So, if I take n squared common, in that case, I have 1 minus 1 over n squared, right? Minus 1, correct? Now, look here. As soon as I have all this, in that case, what really happens is that as n approaches infinitely large, the number shown here, 1 over n, approaches 0, right? Do you see that? So, we get limit n approaches infinitely large, n over minus n square. You see that? Because of this getting cancelled, right? You could write 3 here, 3 times n over n minus n squared. Now, one of these n's get cancelled, right? So, we have this as limit n approaches infinitely large, 3 over, minus 3 over, let's say, n. Now, when you are dividing by a very large value, which is infinitely large, then this value approaches 0, right? Do you see that? So, the function approaches 0. Since it approaches 0, we also say horizontal asymptote. Is y equals to 0. So, when n is approaching large value, we see that the function value given to us approaches 0. So, that means y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Well, that's an additional information, but we now have the answer here that this limit is 0, right? Perfect. So, that is how you do it. In this particular case, we will adopt the same method. We will factor out n square. So, we can write this as limit n approaches infinitely large. Factoring out n square gives us 2 minus 1 over n plus 1 over n square, correct? In the denominator, factoring out n square will give us 3 minus, we could factor 3 also. Anyway, 3 minus 3 over n square, right? So, when n is very large, in that case, what happens? These two terms approach 0, right? And there, that term also. We see that n square, n square cancels. So, we are left with what? We are left with limit n approaches 0, infinitely large, and the numerator we have 2, and denominator we have 3. Do you see that? All other terms, they are approaching 0, and now it is independent of n, so this limit is 2 by 3, right? So, it is a convergent sequence where the limit is 2 over 3. You can see it is the ratio of the leading coefficients if the degrees of both numerator and denominator polynomials is same. 
you get the idea so we know that this limit is equal to 2 over 3 so with that we have understood basic concept of how do we figure out whether a given sequence is convergent or not right so we said this is divergent right because it oscillates all others are convergent right this is geometric sequence with factor r as 1 over 2 which is less than 1 and it approaches 0 right it approaches 0 here also it approaches 0 where r is 1 over e in this case it approaches 1.9 right in this case this is equal to 0 and this limit is the ratio of 2 over 3 so wherever we found those limits they are all convergent right so that is how we are going to answer these questions i hope the concept is absolutely clear in the next video see how we worked with other type of expressions and this time we have a sequence with sigma notation so we'll explore more sigma notation related questions in the next video so i hope with this you have understood the concept of convergence and in geometric seri sequences, wherever the ratio between the terms is less than 1, absolute value of this ratio, in that case it is always conversant. And when the limits are there, we are looking at the degrees of numerator and denominator. Perfect. So now, with that we come to an end. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Thanks for your valuable time and all the best.